video. Mary, start my timer. Dave's on my right now. Okay. He's not going to work. I think he's going to all fall <laughs> We really rehearsed it with. Did you, you know, choose the first games, first, mm -hmm. first season of Secret to Bible? You mean all the games or the first game? On the, the first game and then the last, next. I can't remember what the first game was. Was, was, one was it? Was it? Yeah. Because we, because we did Warhammer in the past and we're friends with Game Workshop. That's why. But we went out to, we made a big list and said, we just went and talked to everybody. Hey, we got this new game. It's going to be super fucking cool if you want to be a part of it. Um, and then and then the people would go, oh, let us think about that. Um, but yes. if you can imagine, this was, a, it, it seems like, oh, it's so obvious now. But at the time, it wasn't. And it took a lot of convincing, um, even from us who had been in the industry for a while. It took a lot of convincing for people that this is going to be a cool idea. Uh, yes. yes. Diet Rod fans love Let it. Easter eggs and video games. I'm wondering if there's going to be any hidden Easter eggs that have made their way from the video games to the series or something. That is. Yes, but if I told you, then it wouldn't ruin it, right? <laughs> they would be. <laughs> um, you know, it's funny because when we were making the series, I, like, when I was growing, I remember when you can't not go back to your childhood. No, no, I, yeah. I fucking, <laughs> what? Do, because of the like, YouTube, I have to go back I'm pre, pre, pre YouTube. Me. Like Doom Two comes out, and my friend discovers like John Romero's head somewhere on his pike in, in, in that game, and he started like YouTube to get on to find out where that uh, that is in the game, and it took me like an entire week of every like trying to get through every corner to find it. And unfortunately, nowadays, if there's a secret or an Easter egg or something, it's up on YouTube like that day. So no, I'm not going to tell you where they are or where they are, but there are there are definitely many. <laughs> What was your initial story that you wanted to tell? Because this, this enabled you to go to a different world to tell your stories. What was the first one that you wanted to express? Yes, seek love. Uh, the first story. Um, well, the story's done that. So I'll just, any episode that we picked, so Warhammer, for example, right? The, what we were just explaining is that there's a, we tried to emulate the, in, in Love, Death, and Robots, we essentially have short stories, like from compendiums or whatever they mean. Um, and we wanted to continue that process, so we bring authors in, and, and they all pitch us ideas. We, we sort of distill the entire franchise, all 40 years of Warren Hammer, into like a, a, a rather comprehensive guide, but like, and, and together with Games Workshop, the do's and don'ts, like, don't do, we don't want to see, we, like, we want to use Ultramarines, and we don't want to use these Xenos, or whatever it is. And then we sort of go to those authors, and we come back to us with some ideas. And we sift through those, we pick a winner, it gets expanded out, so... If, because one of the things Tim and I didn't want to do was just homogenize the whole series through like the Tim Dave filter. So it's all the stories we want. So like it's that author pool was a way of making sure like different voices and, and different sort of. And it wasn't just games yeah. picked by two white dudes. Yeah. Wow. So middle aged so the, white dudes. The, me. You. So I'm, stories are like in some cases, yes, they, you know, um, and I think it wasn't it, in other cases where we worked closely with the developers, but. The, the process was, I would say, no two episodes were sort of created in the same way, which is what it feels like what an anthology should be. How familiar do people need to be with each of these video bands? Mm -hmm. each show? Not, not at all. I mean, the, the whole, I think if the only people that showed up were gamers, the show would still be a massive success, but they get... It, Oh, well, even then, not every gamer has played every game, right? And and there's a disparity. The Warhammer fans, maybe they don't play Spelunky. Um, so, so you, how do you make it appealing to 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 those? And and the core, I think the core is, you have to stay true to what fans fell in love with about the franchise, but you also have to have a core emotional story. And even in Warhammer, where it's a lot of violence, there's a it's a, it's a father son story. Um, and and in Spelunky, it's a it's, it's kind of a mother daughter story. And, but they all have an emotional core, even if, you know, the, the age at which you watch them might be uh, differently appropriate. So I feel like I, I don't, I, honestly, I don't play half of those games because I'm too busy reading books but, um, and making stuff. But, but uh, I can appreciate all of them. And even like the Warhammer one, we sat um, someone down from a Hollywood studio and I said, you're not going to understand any of this. Um, and neither do I, honestly. But just let it wash over you because it's fucking beautiful. I mean, it is violent, but it is beautiful. 
and you can just have this experience. And Dave did a great job. He directed that one of not overloading the audience with too much uh, exposition or too much of the lore. It's just enough that you get you understand what the characters are doing and why, uh, and then you can just enjoy them. With a want to know more. Like my hope is that the the non fans are like, oh my god, I didn't know anything. You know, you may have watched your partner play with the tabletop game and wonder like why is that interesting and hopefully the episode makes them lean in and go like oh, i would like to know more about that um and that'll hopefully make their gamer friend proud but you've got so many video game properties here from warhammer to mega man to pac-man are there any other video game properties that you want us to instill here but you probably want to save for the future or any other future seasons oh like a billion yes. i mean that yes the list we had is pretty, uh, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't look at this list and say, this is the absolute like top pick. I mean, Dave's list would be different than my list would be different from your list. Um, but the, the show is comprised of the people that we went after. And then there's the people that said, yeah, we'll take a, we'll take a chance on this new show. Um, but, but just one look at, we have a giant uh, Google doc of like all the games that we couldn't put in the show. Uh, and it's massive. And and if you forget about all of them, then I'm like, oh, my God, I, I lost six months of my life to <laughs> flashback. I want, I want to do a flashback game. Um, so th there's a lot of room left to. I think we have many seasons if, if everybody shows up. I'm hoping that we can even have some some sort of uh, tabletop game. Oh, yes, but even like I want to know what the community wants to see. I want to know like if there's maybe one day we'll have like a... An, an audience upvoted episode of like what what do people want to see? Because it's like we, it is just us sitting in a room picking stuff and, and yeah. developers coming to us. Yeah, well, building on what he and he uh, said, instead of just asking about specific titles, I sure. I'm curious what you think of as the essential criteria for a game to be considered for the show, and what kind of games you would say never would be on secret level. Well, I don't. I don't think I ever want to say no. No game could ever be a part of Secret Level. I would like. There were some porn games. Probably, oh yeah. Probably, 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 probably not going to. Yes. Probably not going to explore that subcategory. <laughs> You're saying. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> yeah. There were some. I did. I did play Laser Suit Larry. I remember that <laughs> but a very, very long time ago. Um, but I would, you know, I, this first anything new is an inherent like risk. We've never done this before. What is this going to be like? So, I'm like. You know, I love the fact that all these sort of disparate franchises came together and like, this sounds like a fucking great idea. Because it feels more in service of the community than any any of their individual IP. Like, I'm, I miss E3. I remember when I first got to LA and that convention was around, it was fucking awesome. I loved going and, and it felt like the community came together for this moment it, and like, we don't, and now like, you know, Jeff still has the, has the game awards now and whenever the gaming community comes together, it just feels like this big, monumental, joyous moment and celebration of like the biggest clubhouse on entertainment clubhouse on planet Earth. So like the first of those people, it was just like, hey, this seems new, but we'll support it. Like if we're in seat, where would we do in future seasons? Yeah, but I love that. I don't I mean, think there's a defining. I think if anything, I I just wouldn't, and we try to do this, is not make it like all sci-fi or like we would love some about this horror. Like comedy, science fiction, fantasy. Right? We try and get a, a little bit of indie nostalgia, AAA games. Like one as as much variety as we can as we can get in the series. So we are bringing uh, right now secret level. So it does mean that uh, Love Them and Rebels it's finished, or you'll yeah. be on both boats at the same time. No, no, we're working on another. It, I think it's knowledge, public knowledge. We're working on a season four. So. That'll be out soon enough. No, I don't want to give up Love, Death, and Robots. It's my, we are, my baby. We want to make as much it's my baby stuff as people. As long as people will live. Yeah, it's, they're, they're, they're built off the same thing. Um, we answered a question over there, but Blur did video game cutscenes, and we learned the short form, and then we said, oh, well, let's just tell... I feel like Love, Death, and Robots came out of our video game cinematic work, and this show just really just brings it home to where we started. So, um, But I love, I love all of it. I, the thing that's great about Love, Death, and Robots is you can just do all this weird shit. And it's just... Blood, it could be anything. Sex, yeah. There is, there is some sex. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I, I like sex. There was a question about I just, what's on the don't list. Uh, <laughs> well, see, but it's different. It's just, 
Well, how much of creative freedom were you in allowed to reimagine these games, or were there any restrictions or guidelines that were given from the developers? Yes. Um, we think that, like I said, that we spent a couple of weeks with developers and we distill their franchises down to something digestible for the authors. But there's definitely like a do's and don'ts page, and like I was just joking, like you know, sort of sex and nudity pop up a lot on the don't don't section. But the our the, the some gave us much more freedom than others. I, I don't know if you guys have seen any of the episodes yet, but you may watch Pac-Man, and that will that will that will inevitably show you the large amount of freedom we were given. Like, <laughs> um, but in others, like in a in a new franchise that's just finding its feet, like Exodus, um, who like we love the developer's archetype, but we worked with a lot on the Old Republic trailers we did over the years, like that. We're trying to be a little closer to what they're trying to build their franchise into being. So we're not sort of telling some abstract offshoot from their from their franchise. We're, we're staying a little close to what they're doing. Um, so it's again, even in that in that space, it's a, like it, there's a variety of like very true to IP. Like even Warhammer, like it's impossible to tell all of that. So we distilled it into like a a violent tone poem for what we feel Warhammer in its sort of core DNA. And, and we really are making these to, it, it's not like play the game and then watch the movie. We're, we're hoping that people watch the movie and they play the game because it's, it's built to enhance the gameplay experience. These, these, these stories, we hope it drives people to play games, even though Amazon probably doesn't want us to say that because their biggest competitor is games. You know, if you play a game, you're not watching Amazon, but we hope it goes both ways. But they have a game that's kind of... Yes, the yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes, they do. But but still, <laughs> should we ask Thank about concourse? Thank you. So <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. The Thank you. Sure, sure. Thank you. Yeah. Oh well. Concord is Concord is. A, we loved working with them. They were great people. Um, a great you team will be to work with. Legacy. <laughs> I, well, the episode is great, and I think people can see. You know, I can't speak to whether it was the right game at the right time, and we didn't honestly. They all love the people. Think, but, and yeah. I can say that they cared deeply about about what they were doing and it's terrible for any people that invest so much time yeah, into yeah. their into that and because they these people fucking they were working hard um and they believed in it it was just you know i here's an, an example of someone believing in something and it, and it didn't <laughs> I, I and it didn't do i didn't do quite as well as uh but I have a Blu-ray. Come on, so I'm very proud of my. I'm very proud of my movie. It did. Thank it. you. I saw with my dad. It's called. He got me into it. I was walking out of the theater at the end of the run, uh, and I was with two Gina Carano and so, some other people that went to see it with me. And this woman behind me is saying to her husband, "Man, I, I kind of like that movie." And the guy's like, "Yeah, it's getting the shit kicked out of it online. I don't know." I don't know why, because I thought it was pretty cool. And she's like, yeah, I really like it. And I turned around and I said, can I give you a hug? And I've been having a bad few weeks, and it was really nice to hear that. And thanks. you. We just got whatever, wrong thing for the wrong time or, or wrong message. Thanks, you too. Yeah, Zoff Speed.